What's up guys, it's Jay, Morning After Kill, and I'm back here on possibly Borderlands 2. That is, if I don't bitch out and jack a bunch of gearboxes <laughs> footage of Tiny Tino Wonderlands to put in the background and risk that copyright strike. <laughs> but today we're going to have a little bit of pre-release talk about the upcoming Gearbox game, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, which I've, I've kind of been keeping radio silent about. I'm just sitting back and seeing how the pre-release launch cycle goes. And I, I feel like now that we're, what, like three-some months away from the launch of the game, and your boy Matt can't really fuck up any of the pre-release you know, hype that they've been going on, you know. <laughs> I kind of want to give you guys my generalized overview of where I'm at with this game. Alright, so first off, I'm not going to lie. Let, let, let's be honest and give Gearbox their flowers while they're here. The game looks fucking gorgeous. But like something that Gearbox was never short on was fantastic art style. Especially when it comes to some of their more fantastical settings in the Borderlands series. And, you know, with Tiny Tina Wonderlands, it's nice to see them being able to step outside of the constraints of the Borderlands series and be able to deliver some environments that's more than just some barren desert wastelands or, you know, corporate cityscapes. But my biggest concern about the game is how well is Tiny Tina going to work at the main center of an entire game? It's one of the things I've noticed, you know, when I go back and I take a look at old content or when I do subsequent playthroughs of Borderlands 2. Tiny Tina works well in small doses, right? Just a little sprinkle here, a little sprinkle there. Maybe you toss in a chunk of DLC that you can choose to play or not to play. But centering an entire game around Tiny Tina as a dungeon master, especially young Tiny Tina, right? It, it looks like it might get a little tiresome after some time. You know, un unless they can manage to get, like, enough random dialogue from her in the game to change it up on every subsequent playthrough that you make. You know, I, I, I could see her wearing thin kind of fast. <laughs> but the gameplay looks badass. Obviously, it's using the Borderlands 3 engine. Why wouldn't it? I mean, it's, it's not a bad thing because, once again, Borderlands 3 delivers on some pretty solid gunplay movement mechanics. Go back and watch all my content. I will never, ever not give them props for the, the, the fucking Borderlands 3 engine. The Borderlands 3 engine is smooth and it's solid. However... They just kind of missed the mark on everything else in Borderlands 3, question <laughs> mark. However, however, I do feel like because this is a clean slate of a game, even though it's built on the Borderlands franchise, this is the first in its series, it looks like that they're giving themselves some really good foundations to build upon. Mostly... Mostly the idea that your character is your character and not just a preset avatar in game. You know, really for the first time, you know, you're going to be given ownership of your in-game identity in the Borderlands universe. I, I, I hope that they go further than just allowing you to choose, you know, outfits and heads to really drive home that user identity and get kind of kind of crazy with it <laughs> but i'm also excited to see what gearbox does in terms of like weapons and gear right especially like when you consider in tiny tina's dlc the magic missile and the chain lightning they're both considered top tier grenade mods 
that really stepped outside the box of what we saw in terms of grenade mods in the Borderlands series. And, you know, an entire game where that's literally the entry point for base gear? Ah, I, I fucks with that. <laughs> like, that really excites me to see what Gearbox can come up with in terms of gear, combo, and specs. But you always know I gotta have a great assault with every fucking point I make. Go back and watch it, you'll see. There's a great assault with everything, right? I'm tired of fucking logging in to video games and finding out that my gear and my loadout does not work the same way it did when I just invested 75 fucking hours to fucking farm that loadout, all right? So if you're going to come up with some cool ass like gear and combo of specs and fucking, you know, cl class mods and all sorts of skill trees and shit, let us fucking, let us, let us be strong. Let us enjoy, you know, fucking some shit up. That's the whole point of farming 75 hours for a piece of gear. Let me go and just beat that boss's ass real motherfucker. I deserve it. <laughs> So, my name is Jay, more than after kill. I want to thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys rate, comment, subscribe. If you thought about one of the videos, I'd highly appreciate it because it gives me motivation to make more videos for y'all motherfuckers to watch. My motherfucking videos, but let me know in the comment section down below. Are you excited for Tiny Tina's Wonderland? Do you think that this gives Gearbox, like, a blank slate to work off of and really get creative? Or... Do you just kind of feel like Gearbox ran out of ideas in the Borderlands universe and they're trying to shoehorn this game in between as a cash cow until they can figure out what the fuck they want to do with Borderlands 4? Let me know in the comment section down below and we'll talk about that in another video. My name's Jay. We're in the Afterkill. Thanks for watching. I'm going to see y'all motherfuckers later.